Exclusive seller of Eden Academy uniforms. All the way down. I'm six, I swear. <laughs> He's so hard on her. Yeah, they're they're bloodthirsty over there. Not surprising. Not surprising. Have a great time, Anya. And it's all for education though, right? It's all for the kids, not for status or anything. Well, this is gonna cost you. And by you, I mean the taxpayers. <laughs> Again. Do we have any money left after the crazy amusement park adventure? I wonder what his budget is for the month. Probably a lot. I know what some of those words mean. <laughs> many, many of them. I can't wait to get to school. Let's see the Anya adventures. Seems like she got over her fear of kidnapping. I feel like that coach just screams spy. Can we get an Anya and your alone adventure? That'd be cool. Now that she slept off that hangover, maybe she'll stay sober this time. <laughs> Not shady at all. This whole thing, this whole get up. And this photo booth. <laughs> We've seen her before. Konnichiwa. Wise handler Sylvia Sherwood, alias Handler. Very creative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. But it was worth it. It was worth it for Anya's happiness. Yeah, it's a real racket. Yeah, but their hands are tied. Maybe one of the fastest ways to get what you want or make yourself indispensable is to find a way to have something that people think they can't do without and can't get without you. I mean, if the stakes of this mission are world peace, he could buy whatever he wanted. He could buy a peanut factory for Anya and they would bat an eyelash. Phase 2. Get Anya to do more work for us. Yeah, I'm developing feelings. Feelings for my family. Okay. Imperial Scholars, a humble title for humble people. And Anya must become an Imperial Scholar and earn Stellas. Anya does a lot of the heavy lifting in this mission. Right. Tonitra's bolts, anything but that. I like how this mission... <laughs> Hello, anxiety, my old friend. I love how this mission just ends up being life. It's just life. You gotta raise your kid well. <laughs> Live a good life. And maybe you save the world in the process. There's a metaphor in there somewhere. <laughs> School is so bizarre. There was this turning point for me in college that made me question things in a new way when my psychology professor failed me despite me getting a 105 on the cumulative final because I didn't turn in a homework assignment or something. I thought to myself, I'm paying for this. Why am I paying for people to try to instill subservience in me? You know what I mean? In just about every case, 99% of the stuff you learn, you're going to forget or is not going to be important. Yet you are paying huge costs for the privilege. Even if you don't go to college or don't pay a lot for university, the time cost is unbelievably massive. If you want to learn a subject and are interested in it, you could learn an entire semester's worth of material in a week. I think it's a huge mistake to dismiss it completely, even though I'm tempted to call it a scam. Just because of how ubiquitous it is, and if something is ubiquitous, it probably means it, it plays a vital function. I don't want to get too cynical, but there's a part of it that's kind of babysitting, right, and keeping you busy while implanting you with a sort of social obedience training. Do the things we tell you in the order we tell you to do them, and you will be rewarded, and this is a model for life, which I think is one of the most common lies that people inherit as kids. There's an element of it that's busy work, which I sort of understand, because it's like, yeah, all our kids are accounted for, and our, our teenagers aren't roaming the streets. Let's keep them busy until they're not destroyed themselves and everything around them. Or let's give them a confined bubble where they can wreak havoc on each other. And we'll call this bubble high school. Speaking as a student, the point is to make your life better. You want to have a good life. The truth is no one really has the exact answer for any one person. That's the individual journey. So it's a mistake to think that going to school is learning, you know, or just benefiting you by virtue of being there. The question is so much more important and bigger than school could ever provide the answer to in any meaningful way. Everyone's looking for value and it's in our nature to want to have these signifiers that give us some kind of wow factor that gives us leverage into getting things that we want materially. And those things can all be really useful tools, but they're not it. So much of what we do comes under the pretense of it being a thing we need to do to start doing the things we actually want to do. A huge example of this obviously is money. You know, people want money not to have some green paper. It's used to get things that you want, but then you sort of got to ask yourself, what is it that you even want? I think that question is kind of illuminating because a lot of those things are probably things you you could be doing now. I was just listening to someone talk about how as soon as they got rich, they started thinking about their health. And it's like, you can work on your health now. A big one for me is travel. You know, people want to retire and travel. I've been traveling 
for most of my adult life and I've been flat broke doing it. But perhaps the biggest one is I just think people want to be satisfied. They want to feel good about their lives and connected to it. And that's not going to be found in any of these things. I mean, that's going to come through just a really dark and painful journey of self-reflection and pain and suffering initially, which is not to say none of these things should be pursued. I think there's value in doing anything well and money, power, fame, these can all be great and be really fun, but they can't be it. It has to be recognized that they're all vehicles to something else and that thing is probably there. It's just that actually it's harder. So I I don't want to see Anya going to this terrible school of terrible people who are just judging each other and trying to find false value and rank and status and Stella's or whatever it is. I think the good parenting aspect of this will be keeping her insulated from that and giving her a good head on her shoulders and making sure she is not trading the greatness of her just raw child self for trying to please these people who have kind of lost their way. I don't care if world peace is at stake. Welcome to Hogwarts. <laughs> What crawled up her skirt? She is adorable. Don't be. It sucks there. You gotta worry about lightning lightning strikes. You get nine of them and you're out, etc. At first. Yeah. I feel like she's gonna do great just because she thinks that way. Just because she sees the importance of it. It's tough. As my boss at Wall Street used to say, you're gonna f up and that's all right. <laughs> well, she's self-aware. She knows she's cute. Yeah, I'm liking this day. Mother-daughter day. In your episode. Ooh, passing up the chance for takeout? Bold move. Uh-oh. It's already happening. Anya was right to be paranoid. They messed with the wrong fake mother, though. <laughs> we have similar cooking styles. You just throw it in a pot. Just throw it all in a pot, a little salt. You're good. I didn't realize just how likely this was. Literally, like, the whole town. She's out to kidnap her. Oh, no. No. Thank you. I've been thinking it's weird that yours is a, a killer. How are they going to square that up morally with the rest of the show? But in this case, <laughs> I'll allow it. I mean, I feel like I could do that. <laughs> Maybe not. What kind of pumpkin are we talking about here? <laughs> the mercy she just showed is un unfathomable. But Anya is going to crush it at school. She actually is really intelligent and has a, has a great personality. <laughs> I wish someone prepared me for school that way. Hello, anxiety, my old friend. Your work is just beginning. All that's left is raising Anya into a good person. Speaking of Harry Potter, <laughs> 10 points for Gryffindor. You know what Sonya has that the other students probably don't have? Hunger. And it's personal hunger. It's not to make daddy or mommy happy. Well, it is, but she's also just like engaged with life. She just has that personality from the onset. She's of course going to get a lot of merits, but if she doesn't, it's not her failing. It's the school's failing. She's the greatest. That would just mean the school's not elegant at all. They're even houses. I wonder which one to slither in. Probably Gryffindor. There he is. The mark. The friendship scheme, mission six. Yeah, just all the heavy lifting. You're always excited at hearing her name, too. <laughs> at least she's on his radar. This kid. It's very tough to read people's minds. Although I think I would really appreciate it. Hey, we got Mr. Elegance himself, aka Dumbledore. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that's her biggest danger. She's like too big. I don't know. She's too big for this world. It's funny how little I care about this world peace thing and how much I care about Anya's well-being. I don't want her to fall victim to the, the temptations of this world. Not to say the mission's unimportant, but I just think that Lloyd's challenge, which I'm pretty sure he'll complete based on what we've seen from him so far and the choices he's made, is getting her to become a part of this world and succeed in it without letting it corrupt her. Being in it and outside of it at the same time. Keeping that Anya core intact while taking what she needs from it. <laughs> Oh, 
This is Slytherin. I ended up in Slytherin somehow. <laughs> Psychologist doesn't really rank. This can be mob in this life. Wow, very direct. Wow. This is legit. <laughs> Malfoy and what was his name? The other two? Crab and Goyal. Ooh, I feel like there's a way to misinterpret that. <laughs> yep. Inside, she's boiling. They could end up being good friends, and this guy could end up being pretty cool. You never know. He's just a kid. Yeah. I don't know. There's a point where you gotta stand up for yourself, no? Oh, speaking of which, so that training really paid off. Give her a stellar. Stellar? Stella? 10 points for Gryffindor. Or Slytherin, whatever we're in. <laughs> Just don't get caught, right? It's in my name, though. Are these stellars up open to interpretation? This could end up in Anya's favor. Right. This could just be loyalty and boldness. <laughs> yes, fast and his greatness. Yeah, exactly. It's courage. So courageous. Give her a stellar. Give her a stellar. Oh, just made him an enemy too. But also made him someone who is in her life, if that makes sense. They're now bonded in a weird way. It's the opposite of a stellar, and I'm very unhappy about that. <laughs> he was crying. I like this tally, I can sort of see where this is going. I'm wondering if the Stellas and the, the Bolts work as a plus minus thing, where it's a total score, or if they're independent from each other. Like, if you have five Bolts, but get eight Stellas, does that get you in? I like how there's a Persona relationship score as well. I wonder what her key item will be when she maximizes her social links. It's really great and entertaining how these shows manage to pull this sleight of hand, where it's like, it's about psychic powers or saving the world, but actually it's about life. It's about school. <laughs> in this show, I feel like there's already been a lot of robustness established. Anya is a very interesting case in that she is obviously really gifted, is more aware, I think, than most kids are, perhaps partly due to her experiences. Realizing at a young age that there's risk in life, I think has an effect on people like that, for both good and for bad. And she's got a spark, you know, she's got a spark that will be a real gift, but also will put a target on her back. For the administration, who sort of has their, their guidelines on what they want to accomplish, and basically just want to, you know, have an easy day at work and go home to the fam. But more importantly, from her peers, partly because that's her target, right, this Draco Malfoy character, but also because, just generally speaking, kids are the most willing adopters of any sort of structure that's been put in, in front of them, because they're are the most vulnerable and therefore cling the hardest to what they feel is survival in their world. So if their parents tell them that their approval is linked to doing well in school, not only will that often feel like a life or death thing, but they will base their values and worldview on that exclusively because they haven't had the chance to explore nuance. And so anyone who doesn't do that well is terrible and also a threat. But Anya is bigger than this, even if it won't feel that way and even if people won't treat her that way. She has something special that is not going to fit into this system that exists for social proof or professor's approval or her peers' acceptance. She, of course, can't do it because she's gifted, but that's the challenge for her and also for her parents who need to nurture her and want to see her succeed in this world and keep her safe and all that stuff. And I have a feeling that the triumph of this will be Anya doing what she needs to do while also becoming more Anya, which is basically the theme through just about every great show I've watched. <laughs>